I'm going to show you how I process this photo from this to that, right after the intro. From now on, like your parents were. You are the secret force of the what is going on YouTube? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, like and subscribe, and turn on the notification. All right, so without any further ado, let's start with Lightroom. And like always, I always use Lightroom even for just subtle basic adjustment. And you can, as you can see, um, this was the photo before, this was the photo after Lightroom and it's just basic global adjustments that we've done here. A bit of the exposures, uh, left out the shadows, the whites, and turned down the blacks. And if you've been following along, this is my you know initial process. Now let's move to Photoshop and see what I've done there. So now that you are in Photoshop and you're like, hmm, what do I do? What do I do to make this photo just looks better? I always tend to do this first, clean up the photo. But this is the most basic thing that you do. So I start with two layers, or maybe one, really depends on how you work. The first layer is just to remove, you know, these small objects that are not complex. And I will use the healing brush, the spot healing brush, really depends on the complexity of what I'm trying to remove. And for things that are like lines and larger things, I like to use the clone stamp tool. It just gives me better results. However, I did forget this line over here and I tend to do this every now and then because I'm really just in a hurry. You shouldn't be in a hurry. However, I fixed it afterwards, but let me show you for now the, the camera raw setting. So uh, let me load that up. So camera raw is essential in my work. And if you've been again following me along, you know that this is my process. So let's have a look at what I did here. Starting with the white balance and the temperature, I just, you know, made it a bit warmer and then decreased the highlights because they were like blown off a little bit. And I did raise the shadow just a little bit because it was a bit dark. Well, not a little bit, but a good amount. And because we've dropped the highlights down, I uh, compensated that by adding the whites. All right, I think my, my computer is dying here. So something is weird, fishy going on. All right, moving forward, I did reintroduce the blacks a little bit back in the photo. And I added a bit of texture. Now I don't use texture all the time. I just wanted to try how the photo would look like. And uh, then of course the clarity, which is the tonal contrast and added a bit of smart saturation, which is the vibrance. Great. Now, can you guess what I did next? Yes, graduated filter. So I added two graduated filter, one at the bottom and one on the top, one with the bottom. I'll see the settings, I drop the exposure, try to darken it a little bit. So that's great. I did the same thing here. I did darken the sky and I added the tint of blue using the temperature slider and drop the highlights just a tad. Now, and then for sharpness, I use Camera Raw to add sharpness. Now, this is not the greatest way to add sharpness in the photo, but it's the laziest. So I did add a bit of sharpness with the masking just to, you know, be very selective. If I hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, you would see a mask. A mask just tells you uh, you know, where, where, where you're getting the sharpening. So the white elements get sharpened, the black doesn't. Very selective. All right, so moving onward, I didn't notice my reflection here, but for some reason I didn't do a good job. I either deleted one of the layers by mistake or something went just off right here. But anyway, the way I remove reflection is either using the brush just to sample from the same area or using the clone stamp tool to remove you know, awkward reflections. And that's what I usually do. All right, next you'll see a subtle use of overlays. And I spoke a lot about overlays before. So here's an example. Now let me put this at 100% and you'll see it's very there. You can see it very clearly, right? But I don't do that at 100%, never. Never do that. So I always use subtle addition. I think it was about 8% or 10%. It's, it's just like small steps until you reach, you know, the ultimate goal of the photo. All right, so I did the same thing over here. 
it's another overlay and if I put this at 100% uh, you'll see it's you know really exaggerated it's there you can see it although I've used a mask but I always lower down the opacity just gradual steps until you reach the ultimate goal. All right, now I do see a group here and that's mainly the sun. I wanted to emphasize and intensify the sun. So I added two layers, overlaid layers and painted in with yellow just to give that boost look to the sun. And yeah, like I said, opacity at 10% and then you have another one at 17%. It's just gradual ways of me doing things. Now I wanted to add more to that burst sunlight over there and I added just a line. I don't know if you see it. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. You see that there over there? And if I disable this, it's gone. Enable this, it's back. It's just a line that I drew with uh, the color yellow and set the blending mode to overlay with an opacity of 66 and of course I just wanted to control that layer with a mask so I added a mask and I just added the parts that I wanted to kind of show. All right so moving forward now this is going to be very interesting because this is the first time I use a color fill to color grade my photo. So I wanted to give that brown tone to the photo and I used the color fill. Now let me enable this so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the before, this is the after. Now the color fill blending mode is set to soft light. Now if I do increase this to 100%, you can see it very obvious, right? Now let's do this at normal. I can still see it, but hey, you can still see the car as well. What's going on? Why do you have this at 100% but you can still see parts of the car? And that's because, my friends, I use Blendif. Now, Blendif, and I perhaps explained it before. Now, Blendif gives you that flexibility of blending layers together. So here's what I'm doing. I'm telling Photoshop, anything that is below the brown layer with a color of blue, and it kind of faded away, just a tad, bring it out from the layer below on top of this photo. And that's why you can still see some parts of the photo. So any kind of blue bright tintish coming from the layers below onto this layer are being shown. And this is the same technique that we used to change or replace the sky. All right, now if you still have any doubts, if you've got any question, leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. All right, so let's see what I've done next. Let me just put things back as they were. So yes, let's have a look at the before, after, before, after. Very subtle, very nice, kind of like it. Now I added a color lookup and I just didn't like the color so I just left it there. Now the last tip here is I added a curve and I just wanted to give it that slight faded look by raising the blacks and this is how it's done. So this is the before. Now you, it might be very subtle, very subtle. You barely notice it but it adds up to the entire look of the photo. It's just a curve adjustment layer. Um, and I just added these dots, points, and I left it the black. So in this photo, the, the one that you're looking at, there isn't 100% blacks over here. But that kind of gave me a very nice look. And that's it, YouTube. We've reached the end of this walkthrough or this video. Now, if you have any question, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video.